for Sunrise Bakery. Let us do the cooking. Another Tasmania Talks podcast. It was around about to G twenty fourteen. We uh, we all sat down and watched a uh, a show on Channel Seven. The reporter on the show was Helen Kapalos, and the subject of the program was a young man called Dan Haslam, who went public admitting that he had been using medicinal marijuana to try and treat the pain associated with his cancers. Sadly, Dan lost his life in uh, in February 2015 and it affected many people who had met him, interviewed him and interviewed his mum. None more so than the aforementioned Helen Kapalos, who has uh, essentially, well, left journalism, walked away from the media, but has been out producing a documentary on medicinal marijuana, medicinal cannabis, if you prefer. It's called A Life of Its Own and uh, it will... Well, gee, it's on at the, uh, the Greek Film Festival in Melbourne... There's a Greek film festival in Sydney and uh, we're trying to organise a screening here in Tasmania too, which I'll talk about shortly. But first up, Helen Kapalos. Hi, Helen. How are you going? Good morning. How are you? Look, I'm very well. Um, we were all affected but in various ways by uh, by Dan Haslam and, and his campaign and just what a stunning young man he was. What, what oh, specific impact did he have on you? Well, I think similar to you as well, um, because I know that we all had discussions at that time. He just had a beautiful relatability. He could have been any of us. And I guess he found himself in a very unlikely position, but also, like a lot of us, had a fairly stereotypical kind of uh, portrayal of what uh, marijuana was yep. and didn't want to go towards it as a treatment found himself in that position and then also found himself on the other side of the law and um, now, his, exactly. his dad's a copper <laughs> absolutely like he, he, so his dad used to head drugs for years yeah. not just a couple of years but yeah. like 16 years or something and used to prosecute people for this and his dad actually found himself in a position where he was having to convince Dan to take medicinal cannabis to ease um, some of the terrible side effects that he was having from chemotherapy yeah. Okay, as a result of uh, of your involvement here, you've uh, you've walked away from what was really Helen a sterling media career. I mean, you're one of the best known faces and names on Australian television, and you've decided to to go off and and dedicate a huge amount of time and your I would argue your own finance uh-huh. finances to uh, yeah. to try and to try and make this documentary, which are it's called a life of its own. Why that title? Uh, the, that title um, really was um, as a result of the story taking on a life of its own and I think that also goes to the reason why I did walk away from the TV career because I started to see in this story in particular that there was a wider story to tell but as we went along it became more sensational so it became about the police raids and it became less about the subject itself and I think also being a woman in my 40s and a feel like, feeling like um, my options were diminished in that long-form features and that kind of storytelling that I wanted to pursue wasn't really there as a, mm. as a viable avenue. Um, but, you know, it's funny. It wasn't like a big decision or a momentous sort of decision to me. It was just one of those things that was a, a no-brainer. I just thought, gosh, this is something I just have to do. And I just... Uh, left and did it and okay. so um, yeah. Look we'll talk uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with Lynn Cleaver shortly uh, who you've been chatting with here in Tasmania yes, to try I and secure a, cre- a screening. She's a wonderful woman and uh, Really and and Jeremy, 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 her son. I mean, I, I assume you've seen the X-rays of Jeremy, have you, Helen? Oh, you... I sure have, isn't it? I mean, you, so you just you, and the thing is, you meet beautiful people like Lynn and families like Lynn's, uh, and you just think to yourself, this is a no-brainer. What is the issue? This ah, is okay. well, that's the, that, that's the sixty-four million dollar question in a very real sense, isn't it? What's the issue? Yeah. Can, can I give you my pet theory? Um, and, and you can agree with it or disagree with it as you see fit. You, you're far more plugged in than I am. Um, the, the, the issue seems to be the slippery slope. There, there is, you know, we've watched what happened in the United States or in some states of the United States where they went down the, the legalisation of medicinal cannabis. And, uh, and then all of a sudden they're dealing with broad-scale uh, legislated decriminalisation. There is a sense at the political level that if they just take this little extra step and allow people to self-medicate in that sense, um, they're opening up Pandora's box to a full legalisation of marijuana. Is that the concern, do you think? Yeah, I, th- I think that is. And, I, yeah. and you know what? It goes to the heart or the crux of what actually does block this, and that is that people fail to distinguish, um, and, and all of us have done it, and I would have done it be- uh, if I hadn't have done this story, we lump recreational into the same basket as medicinal, but there is a distinction. Uh, one of the main distinctions is the quantum of the drug that you're yeah. taking and also that um, that it has a different composition, that there's dosages that are much more small. Yes, there is an element of self-titration that you've mentioned, but it's not like we've got people 
people sitting there smoking a joint going on now, I don't feel as high. It's not like that. Kids with epilepsy are taking oil drops and it's yeah. not often it's a, a high CBD um, yeah, um, tincture. I mean, Lynn can speak to this, I'm sure, more graciously um, and with more wisdom than I can. But it, I just think, you know, we, we all want to um, crunch or distill a topic like this down into something that we can easily understand. And, yeah. and, and unfortunately, it's got a lot of grey areas. Helen, I, I very much look forward to seeing the film, which I've not done yet. And uh, I just look, thank you for wading into this area. It's potentially difficult for all sorts of reasons, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and, uh, yeah. and, and look, we, we want to try and, I, I guess, return your investment because you've sunk a fair bit of personal money into this project, haven't you? I have, but again, I think as part of uh, doing this project, I realised that, you know, when you're meeting people in life and death situations, it never, it just didn't become about the money. So I could have done, at the beginning, I was approached by a few networks to do a pre, what's called a pre-sale. Mm -hmm. um, so it could have been easily managed that way for me and I could have had that return straight away. But what that would have meant, it would have meant giving up the editorial control. Oh, okay. uh, and so I'm really glad that I've done it this way, this way that, uh, you know, that there's a demand platform where people get 5% of box office uh, it goes. Uh, the rest of it goes back to distributors, and I think ten percent comes back to me or something. So it's not. It's, it's not a great. It's not money a money making venture. venture. No, not no, at all. indeed. But, but what it does is align with my original vision, which which is to get it in front of as many people as possible, and just to start an organic education process, and for us to understand. Uh, what the difference is and to walk people through the subject in a way that they haven't been walked through that okay. subject before. So I hope it achieves that. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll let everybody know after the news how they can uh, get along to the screenings here in Tasmania. We'll do that shortly. Tell me a personal question, Helen, if I may. Um, you, If you sadly and, and, and regrettably got something, a cancer or, or, or something that required the use of medicinal marijuana or one of your family, would, would, you, would you go with it? Would you be okay with it? Yes, well, this is really interesting. This is an interesting question for me because um, my mother had um, a cancer, a very rare cancer, and she reacted really terribly to the pain um, killers, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she ran out of options, and we watched her suffer greatly towards the end of her life. And my sister, when we first, when I first did the story, rang me, and we both had a cry on the phone, saying it would have been so wonderful if Mum had, you know, been able to take something like medicinal cannabis. Uh, and not to watch her suffer because the side effects are horrific. I don't know if you've ever, um, you know, had the unfortunate experience of seeing someone grappling with a life-threatening illness. I but, have, as a matter of know, fact, yes. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, you'd understand then when you watch it, those images are with you for a long time to come. Yes. And so, and the terrible side effects, you know, things, uh, you know, that you could, you, that are just unimaginable and you're watching your loved one. So, uh, so for me, I absolutely related it back to my mum's experience. Helen, it's a great pleasure to speak to you. Congratulations on uh, on this effort. I, uh, I have no doubt it will make a, a significant contribution to the debate, which we desperately need to have. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Helen Kapalos, well-known journalist, uh, been doing very good work on, uh, on television for many, many years now, a couple of decades, and uh, has just basically walked away from a, a very high-profile media career to produce the documentary A Life of Its Own. The truth about medicinal marijuana. We'll have a chat with the aforementioned Lynn Cleaver shortly. Her son Jeremy has a very serious form of epilepsy, and the drugs. In case you're not familiar with the story, the drugs he was given, the um, um, prescribed by the medical profession, to try and control the seizures, had such a horrible um, bone wasting effect. It, they literally leached all the calcium out of his bone. So when he now does have a seizure. Um, he breaks bones; they just break. And if you, I've seen the 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 X-rays of Jeremy's shoulder. It's a series of pins and rods from multiple operations. He just breaks every time he hits hits the floor. He breaks. Medicinal marijuana stops him from hitting the floor. At least it helps. For Sunrise Bakery, let us do the cooking. Another Tasmania Talks podcast.